All right, Artemis. Artemis, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? So um, I grew up in the Midwest, Kirksville, Missouri. I was born in Greece. Oh, really? Yes, Cyprus, Greece. But, uh, I grew up in Kirksville, Missouri, in a household of nine, middle of seven kids. I grew up with four sisters and two brothers. Um, How do you describe your childhood? Um, chaotic and wild, painful and interesting, confusing and kind of fun sometimes, but. You had mom and dad? I grew up with a mother and father figure, um, sort of. Not your actual mom and dad? Not my biological parents. You were adopted? That's, that would be a, a safe assumption, I think. Um, I, I always, I thought they were my parents growing up. I started learning more and more. The more I branched out, the more I, more educated, the more I reached out for education and to, uh, to learn more. That's part of the reason why I dropped out of college so many times. Uh, I just kept, kept learning more. At such a rapid pace, I couldn't focus on only what the colleges and universities wanted me to focus on. I was going through um, all kinds of personal crisis at the same time as attempting to measure up to the, the requirements of the educational systems just to learn um, what I wanted to learn to get a career like the rest of my siblings. What did you want to do with your life? Honestly, I wanted to be a musician. Um, I wanted to travel the world and see places, go places and do things. I didn't just want to, uh, didn't want to get stuck in my hometown. I didn't really consider it my hometown, considering the fact that I didn't have, didn't really have friends that would, like consistent friends that were with me all the time. Everyone that I that I knew, that I cared about, just either a disappeared or ended up somewhere else, or b ended up like hating the community that I grew up in. Um, it's just everybody either a disappeared or b, but yeah, it was pretty chaotic. It was a small town in Kansas, um, Missouri. Missouri, I grew up in Northeast Missouri. Yeah, it was pretty chaotic. Um, a lot of people, I'm not going to exaggerate it, but a lot of people coming in and out. A lot of people coming from all, all over the Midwest and even from other countries. And I saw a lot of people come in and out. A lot of people. And for some reason, I don't know, I just, I, I grew up with like, I, I have a disability. I have phonographic hearing. So I, I hear high pitched sounds and low pitched sounds, but with my disability, the form of autism, I remember all kinds of sounds. I, I remember all of it and I can, it gets linked, I can link it to like memories and locations and stuff if I hear a sound. So you're autistic as well? Yes, I'm autistic and I'm artistic. <laughs> but, um, excuse me. <clears throat> Was there any abuse in your childhood? Yes. Um, I was raped at age four or five. And the truth is, I was raped a lot, but I, I don't remember a lot of it because I don't know how people got away with it, but. I've had flashbacks multiple times to being in places like Topeka, Kansas. I was tossed around a lot. I don't know how I ended up in all these situations. I just, I've had dreams where, like flashbacks, where I remember these things. And, um, just, I grew up, like, like I said, I, um, I was raped. I, I have male and female body parts, which is really weird to, to talk about out loud. 
Um, you, you have both? Yeah, I have, I don't even know the names of all the body parts, but I have uterus and ovaries. And I'm, I don't want to. So it makes you a hermaphrodite? Um, I think so. People, people joke like, sir, ma'am, guy or girl, you know, and I don't really don't know how to take it mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was, I think, I think I would be more accepted in a more liberal environment than, or just remove one side or the other. And then I can be accepted by people who want to call me either a guy or a girl. What do you identify as? Honestly, I I would identify as a woman because I I want to I want to have kids one day. I was I was born with a blonde spot in my hair right here, and like I was I looked a lot different. And I I remember having I, I was forced like to take all kinds of pills and stuff, and they put me on all kinds of ke not chemicals hormones. And stuff, and they were changing me up to try to make you more male or more female. They were making me more male, and I remember just like even being at school at the private school, just feeling so sick. Like I just didn't want to be there. The environment was making me sick. Even if I wasn't literally like physically sick, I would I would just want to go home sick, just just to get out of the environment. It was really bad. I, it was just so much, so much stress and judgment and the perspective, the, the way the, it was kind of like the movie, this is how I see it, the movie The Village, um, are, you, are you aware of? I've not seen it. Um, it's about a, a cult in the woods. Um, basically there's like some, some elders or whatever, it's like kind of like a religious community. But at night, they keep the people there by some of the elders dressed up as like monsters. And they would, they would scare people and keep them there. But at the end of the movie, this, this girl is blind, comes to a chain mail fence. You have to keep in mind that the movie is like, it looked like it's in the 18 or 1700s. But this girl at the end of the movie hits this chain mail fence and a state trooper pulls up and you realize it was all, all of this, this entire movie was inside of a, a state park. And I was like, wow, that's basically how I feel about, about me and how I, how I got out here to the state of California. I was in the middle of this the situation. It was just keeping me in the dark, keeping me, keeping me in a situation where I'll be continually, consistently set up to fail and never, never have a chance to succeed or achieve my dreams. And I feel like um, last last July or August, yeah, last July, I feel like I just hit that fence, and I realized I realized some things. I thought it's either now or never. I I used to work. Um, um, I used to have a job out here in the state of California, so I, I just I took a run for it because the man that raised me was using. I don't know how he does it. He, well, I do. He, it's really hard to explain in a, in a short video, but he's moving the police around. He's moving, he does all kinds of things just with comfort of his home on a computer. So I was lucky to make it to California. You've been in California how long? Since last July, since July 5th or 6th. Um, I, I'm just glad I made it out here. I've been alone all this, this entire time, just by myself, running, running and running, but... You've been homeless in Santa Monica since then? Um, well, basically, I, I have been running around, for like, basically Santa Monica, all the way to Long Beach, just back and forth. Where do you sleep at night? Um, I just, wherever I can, that wherever it's safe. Um, Last I, night, for example, where you slept where? I slept over by the pier. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot about energy, electromagnetic energy. I've learned a lot about power supplies and 
Uh, communications, all kinds of things like that. Things I studied in college. Um, sociology, communications. But these other things, like... Basically, uh, I just... I've applied everything I know to survival skills just to stay alive out here. I, I've been raped a lot in my past. and Truth is, I don't know how many times. It's, it's, it's a huge number. and I, I know I need medical attention. I just... I don't want to get stuck in the hospital system. Are drugs a part of your life? They weren't originally until, I mean, I smoked marijuana, which is medical, 100% medical for me. Um, cigarettes, but then last um, August, September, um, I used crystal and methamphetamine for the first time. And if I, Honestly, I wish I didn't do it, or I wish I'd, I wish something was different because I don't want to have to use it ever again. But for some reason, this um, this, this stuff. If if I I don't know, I, I started withdrawing from it pretty quick. That's why you see these these spots on my skin, um, like on my shoulder and stuff. Yeah, you're on your back. yeah the spots on my back. Um, it just. Uh, so works. Yeah, I'm withdrawing from it. I don't want to have to go back, but I don't, also don't want to have to. I, I don't want to like. It's hard to explain, but I don't want to be an, an addict to those drugs either. But um, yeah. How do you support yourself? How do you make money? I I really don't make money. Um, I just. Do my best to get by. I don't have my ID or wallet, my passport. That stuff got stolen last year. I don't remember how it got stolen. I just, I didn't have time to panic and th I just, I had to keep moving. I had to stay, stay, stay alive, stay, stay focused on staying alive. I didn't have time to focus on my bigger dream to go to home to my home country. You'd uh, like to go to Greece? I, I wish I could, I, mean, I hope I can go home someday, I just, I've been praying desperately, um, desperately to get, get home somewhere. Or, to, for, to Greece or to uh, Missouri? Greece, or even like if I had a, a permanent option where, where I could be accepted, like have, I don't want to do it alone, is what I'm trying to say, um, I, like with my male and female body parts. If I were to stay in the USA, I would want the hospital systems to take me seriously so that I could maybe one day have kids. But basically, I'm, I don't enjoy, I'm, I'm, I'm asexual, if that makes sense. I don't want to have sex with people just because they think I need something. Do you have female body parts to, in order to reproduce? Uh, that's what I want to find out uh, because a lot of people think that if I need something, like if I need, if I need anything at all, they think they're they think I'm just free game to rape. They, it's hard to explain. You, like people you think get, that uh, raped on the streets. I've been raped on the streets. I've been, <laughs> yeah, I've been raped a lot of times, and I'm not trying to make a huge like. A huge list of people, but there's, there's a lot of people, even high profile people in this country that have raped me in the past. And I really don't want to, don't want to have to go down that road of judging and pointing fingers for people. But at the same time, I feel like some people take, take me like as a joke because I don't want to, because I'm not interested in playing the, the judging game for other people. I'm tr I'm trying to get help. I'm trying to go home to my home country. Even if I were to stay in this country, I wouldn't. I don't want to just stay here alone. And I want the, like I said, the hospital systems to take me seriously. I don't know how how to explain it, but I don't have uh, like I don't have millions of dollars just to. I don't have that kind of. I don't have that kind of money just. I don't know how much it costs to get that kind of surgery. 
um, get my my parts, my my body back together. I mean, let me ask you a simple question: Do you have a menstrual cycle? Um, it, um, it's hard to explain. I, I didn't have sex ed in high school. I went to private school, so to be honest with you, here I don't even understand some of these things. I, I guess like the like I told you about the movie The Village. It was like a cult thing. I wasn't educated on sexual things, even though I have more sexual organs or more, more. Um, there's more to my body than I than I even knew growing up. I just wish I knew that those things growing up because. But do you, let me ask you this again. Do you, I mean, do you have to deal with uh, a bloody discharge every month? Oh no, um, not like that. I just. I think my um my my hormones and stuff, I don't know how to explain it, but like I'm to the point where like I have parts of my body that are just shifting and when I lay down sometimes people magnetize like with the electromagnetic energy, they magnetize parts of the ground, even remotely. Uh I fear that like even some of my bone marrow has been magnetized, and it's it's pretty pretty scary to go through um, your bone marrow when it's get when your bone marrow might be magnetized, it can leak, uh, it can come out of your skin, and some of these spots I don't know if it's it's just like pus coming out or some of it might be actual bone marrow. My little sister had leukemia when I was. You talking about the sores on your back? Yeah, I think those might be from the Crystal Matthews. Yeah. But like uh, there's other parts where I, I just feel like something inside my bones, and my little sister had leukemia when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, she, she had to have bone marrow transplant, and I'm just curious as to, I hope it's to, I hope that's not the case. But how old are you? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Do you have any friends? I do. I don't have any way of getting a hold of them. I have a couple of cousins in Huntington Beach areas out here. Do you speak with your family at all? Not, not my, um, not my, the original that I grew up with. Do you have memories of your childhood? Do you have any good memories? Um, yes, uh, going out to the lake. Um, Fishing, catching frogs, throwing firecrackers, all kinds of, basically the best memories I had were with, with my friends when I was a kid. Uh, basically just any, any, hanging out with being with friends, um, going out in nature, traveling. Have you ever been in love, Artemis? Um, yeah. There, uh, when I was when I was in school, I went to Pittsburgh State University. I fell in love with this girl named Phoebe. She and I were like long story short, I, I just wanted to marry her, but I didn't realize like I didn't even know what I was. Like I I didn't know that <laughs> some people thought I was gay or something. I didn't even know why people thought these things. I wasn't educated in those those types of ways, but about four months into our relationship, we broke up, and um, I was really depressed at that point. I was sleeping about 16 hours a day, really depressed, and about, I couldn't handle it anymore. I was sleeping that long every single day, and then finally, um, I called my cousin in Huntington Beach. He got me a, a, a job over at, um, on the island, Catalina. All I had to do was have a, a phone interview. Uh, I had a 10 question phone interview with the director of operations. And like, I, I sold all my stuff. I got rid of everything. I was living in a studio apartment. I sold my car, sold all my stuff, I just, 
it wasn't even a week later. Uh, it was about six days. I was out there with my last hundred dollars. So you moved to the island of Catalina? Yes. Two harbors. I, I just jumped the, right in. What, what kind of job was it? I worked as a campground ranger, kind of like a shadowing. I like took the trash out, um, like delivering firewood, taking care of the grounds, just all kinds of, it was a whole new experience, a whole new world to open my eyes up. And How long did you stay there? Honestly, it was a three months job. And then on my way back, I ended up in a hospital in Littleton, Colorado, because I was in the airport, to the Denver airport, which is interesting, interesting that, I'm, that it's come up because my old birth certificate said I was born in Denver, but I wasn't born in Denver, I was born in Greece, which is another interesting thing. I don't want to dive too much, or dive too deep into the conspiracies right now without being on something to be paranoid. <laughs> You know what, I'm what saying? kind of emotions do you deal with now? Do you get depressed or anxious or angry? Um, yeah, like sadness. Well, not really as much of depression, a little bit of depression. But more like I deal with a lot of just really like d disappointment I guess a really deep disappointment and sadness like I I'm always always thinking like if I just expect and just believe that something will happen just believe in God and then which God am I supposed to believe in this time and like it doesn't matter where I go I just have to find out who's Who's the, who's the main god of that land or this land or this area? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, in a group of people, I, in order to survive in that group, I just try to, try to adapt based on, based on what their, who their god is. And I'm always at this point where I'm, I'm always the last one, last one in or out. And I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm gonna make it, so I just um, basically I'm just I always have to prepare to be disappointed, <laughs> and that's just that's just how it is. And I'm I'm not trying to make any I'm not trying to make you feel sorry for me, but what are you afraid of? What do you worry about? Well, I'm I am afraid of basically just. Being the only one, like the only one, like I'm afraid of never, never finding my way home, or never getting there. I don't want to have to get there alone. But at the same time, it's like I know my family is out there somewhere. I mean, uh, I know home for you is where. In your mind. In my mind. And honestly, with with someone like with with but with family, but also with family at home in Greece or something. I don't. Have I don't you been know. to Greece since you were born? No, not since I was born. And you but, said you think you came here after being just a couple of weeks old? Yeah, it was. It was less than a week. A week but you still weeks. see Greece as your home. I want to go home and and just start over, because I wasn't supposed to be here in the middle of all this the, the conflict in the first place. So what, what conflict are you referring to? Um, I grew up in the middle of like um these. I don't know any other way to put it, but other other than like some books call them Nicolaitans. I just call them traffickers, trafficking humans, drugs, to take advantage of people. Basically just selfish people. They don't really care who they hurt or who gets involved. 
I never sold my soul to any cause. I never swore to stay silent on anything. So as far as I'm concerned, you could ask any question and I, I could probably answer you on, on any level. It's just some people would verify it and then they'd, be, they'd wonder how, how I came up with that answer or how I got to it. But the fact is, I don't even want to participate in the the conflicts or the wars or the debates, especially when at the end of the day, I'm probably going to get taken advantage of again. And then, like I said, just in my shoes, if there's any even one person that comes in, comes into like the same shoes as me, only thing I could say is just prepare to be disappointed. I've been been out here just on my own still. I just don't want to get taken advantage of. At the same time, um, it just happens anyway, so I just do my best to fend for myself, but at the same time, I don't want to get in a situation where I have to defend myself physically. So I avoid certain types of conflict, particularly with, like, violence, you know. I, I don't like to have to get in situations, I, I avoid violence all the time, but sometimes I'm just, I get trapped in the middle of it, and it's my own fault for having too much faith and expecting too much good to happen when I should have just really checked myself to my surroundings and realized that all these, all these other things were in the middle of, all these other things were around me, and I, I just couldn't, I had no control over it. All right. Artemis, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course.